All right, so um, I'm going to go over the, some strategies to uh, solve the problem for the uh, volume of the house. Now, we did do something similar to this in class, but I thought I could go over it again and really um, make it clear to you uh, what we're doing with this problem. First of all, let's take a look at a 3D model of this. Um, just tilt this for us so we can see what we're looking at. Get rid of these extra lines. Okay, this is the actual problem. The, um, we want to figure out the volume of the living space of this house. And so if we look at it straight on, on at end, all the area in red is the area that we want to figure out the volume of, and all the area in blue is the area outside of the living space of this house. So um, we have all the dimensions we need to create or uh, create some calculations to solve this. But what I see here for um, shapes are um, a rectangle for the bottom first floor. So if I can get the height of the wall times the width of the building, then I should be able to solve. Okay, and then we also have um, for the second floor we have uh, a rectangle that I'm tracing right here. If I can get the height of this wall times the width of um, this section right here, I can get the area there. And then at the very top here that I'm tracing, we have a trapezoid. Okay, so if I were to put that line work in there. We break that up into those sections. We have a section here, and then we're going to have another section here, and those would be the um, how we're going to break up figuring out the area of this red space right here. Okay. All right. So back to uh, the drawing board. <laughs> Um, what I've done is, uh, because this is a, just a sketch, it's not to scale, I've actually drawn down here to, a, a, to scale what we have for information, um, and I'm going to solve one step at a time here. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the, get the volume of the living space on the first floor, okay? So that would be um, the information that I'd be interested in is just the information right here that I have X'd out. Okay, so that would be a total height of 8 feet, a, le a width of 28 feet, and from our dimensions that we have here, we know the length of the house is 40 feet. So my equation would be eight feet in height times 28 feet in width times 40 feet in length gives us a volume for this section here of 8,960 cubic feet. That's very easy. We solve that one. All right. Um, and I'm going to just keep that number here and we're going to move on to the next. Okay. Remember that this is in cubic feet because we multiplied height times width times length. Now we're going to solve up here for square feet first and then multiply those values times 40 for the cubic feet. And we're going to get a total here and area of this shape and then multiply it times 40. Um, so do we have the information we need to solve the problem? Um, we do. We have a 1212 pitch, which remember that means that our lines for every um, uh, foot traveled, we travel up one foot, and therefore it creates a 45, 45 triangle. Okay, so it's a 45 triangle, um, and this is a 90 degree angle, and the length of the sides in both directions are the same. Okay, if I were to take that triangle and make it bigger, and let's say I want to make it bigger by three times, so then the length of the sides stay three feet by three feet now because I made it three times bigger. All right, but this, the properties of the triangle have not changed. Okay, that's important to remember. So, do you see that there's a triangle 
very similar to the one that we just looked at, except it's in the opposite direction. We still know the characteristics of the strangle has not changed. It's a 12-12 pitch. And I've been given the distance from here to this line in one direction. So that's exactly the same in this direction. So let's ch check that theory and see if that's actually true. It is. All right, so see the three feet here in the horizontal distance, I travel exactly the same distance um, in the vertical direction. So same thing on this side. What that does is that gives us the height of this rectangle. Okay, now let's see if we can figure out the length. Well, we know that this is 28 feet, and if we subtract three feet from one side and three feet from the other, that would end up being 28 feet. minus 3 feet, minus 3 feet would give us 22 feet. So the length from here to here, we can figure out from the dimensions provided are 22 feet. If I take that information, 3 feet times 22 feet, I can get the area. All right, so now we have the area in square footage of that rectangular space. So I'm going to put a line through it so that we know that we've done that space, okay? And there's our answer right there actually. Let's change this to a regular color so that we know which is our answer. There's our answer right there for that section, okay? Um, and here's our answer here for down here. So we'll keep this the same format. Okay. Now I have to get this area here. And remember, this is in square feet and cubic feet, so I still have to get this whole area here in volume, and then I can add it together with that. So let's see if we can figure out now what we need to figure out to, to um, solve for this trapezoid. We need the length of base 1, which we do have. It's 22 feet, and the length of base 2. Now can we figure out the length of base 2 from this situation? We can. If we take this 7 feet 8 inches and subtract from it the 3 feet, we would get the resulting height here of 4 feet 8 inches. Okay? So if I take the 7 feet 8 inches or 7.6667 feet minus 3 feet. I end up with 4 feet 0.6667 or 4 feet 8 inches. So I'll, I'll write that out in feet and inches as well. 7 feet 8 inches minus 3 feet is going to be 4 feet 8 inches. Okay? So if I have that, if I know that that's 4 feet 8 inches, then do I also know that this distance from here to here is also going to be 4 feet 8 inches? So I know this height right now, 4 feet 8 inches, is this going to be the same? Absolutely, because of this. So I now know that the distance from here to here is 4 feet 8 inches on both sides. So I can now subtract 22 feet uh, from 4 feet 8 inches twice. So it would be 22 feet minus 0.6667 minus 0.6667. And I know the length of this right here is 12 feet 0.667 or 12 foot 8. Let's see if that's true. Perfect. OK. So now do I have enough information to solve for the trapezoid? I have the length of the base. I have the length of the second base. And I have the height. So let's put that equation in. OK, so there's the equation. This is base 1, base 2, divided by 2, times six, uh, 4.667. So let's try that out, 12.667 plus 22 equals, divide that by 2 equals, and then multiply that times 4.6667 equals. So my area for the trapezoid up here is 80 
0.89024445. Or let's round that to the nearest. This would be square feet. Okay? Remember that this is still in square feet. We haven't multiplied times the third dimension yet. So now I can take the total of the trapezoid here, which is 80.89, the total of the rectangle here, which is 66, and add those together. All right, so this is what I've done. I've done 80.89 square feet plus 66 square feet times 40. So let's try that out. So we're gonna, I already have the 80.89 uh, plus 66. Multiply that times 40, and we get that 5,875.10, because we'd have to round up, and that's cubic feet. So I'm definitely going to highlight that in red. So our second floor volume if we answer this is is 5875.61 cubic feet our first floor volume whoops is 8,960 cubic feet. So therefore, our total volume would be 8,960 cubic feet for the first floor volume plus 5,875.61 cubic feet for the second floor volume gives us a total of 14,835.61 cubic feet for the house. And that's how you do the math.